Okay. Hallelujah. So it's just for everything. So does it mean, you know, if I, because, you know, sometimes as, as an undergrad, when I was growing up, you know, if I walked up to a lady and say, I say, I love you, or maybe I write her a love letter, or maybe send some cards. You know, there are so many things in my heart, you know, that I'm really, you know, trying to configure it. Hallelujah. So, uh, and I think most guys also have that. If, if I say I love a girl, does it mean sex? Does it really mean sex? Or is it just it's, it's a good question. Um, and I think with the examples I had uh, said earlier, yeah. it says a lot about the motives. The motives. <laughs> because in, in those three instances, those three people would say they were in love. Yeah. Amnon was in love. Yeah. Uh, um, Jacob was in love, mm -hmm. but for different reasons. reasons yeah. One was just primarily the sex. Because immediately after, the Bible said immediately after Amnon slept with uh, Tamar, mm -hmm. the love, the hatred he had for her was <laughs> more <laughs> than the love he had for her initially. So basically, he had achieved his goal. His goal was sex, it's done, get out of this place. And that happens a great deal. Just don't forget the next thing you're about to say. So, which means there is also, there's also lost, lost, you know, yeah. factor. Yeah. You know, when I say, you know, I'm in love with you, yeah. or I love you, do you understand? Mm -hmm. there's, a fa there's a lost factor there. So, so that was lost. Yes. She was lost in after her, after the sister. Exactly. Right. Yes. But in his mind, he was in love. He and, was. In love. And this is the problem with like naturally, nobody just sits sits down in his heart and says, um, "I I lost I lost after that person." <laughs> Normally, they always think they are in love. That's in their mind. They actually believe that they are in love. But the thing about it is, they know after the fact. Like after maybe you get the girl, now you now begin to realize, oh. Uh, it's not even what I expected. Get away from my life, right? So now it is, that's when you can now say, oh, it wasn't really love, it was uh, lost in that sense. Hallelujah. So I think, guys and ladies and gentlemen, right? I think we have to be able to differentiate. You know, to differentiate. Hallelujah. Now we're not going there yet. We would, uh, you know, go there in, in, in the next one. But what about marriage? If I say I'm in love with with um, Shirley, you know, how would, how would she know that I'm, I'm not coming for sex, but for marriage? Yes. Yeah, no, the same thing. Uh, uh, what, what I still said, like I said the other time, it's over time you get to know, look at the story of Jacob, for instance. He was ready to go all the way for seven whole years, or 14, just to be able to say, yes, I got that person. You understand? So, is the person ready to play by the rules? It's a big question. This is how it is supposed to be done. If you want the ultimate price, you've got to pay the ultimate price. So, uh, and the ultimate price is for you to be able to do things, play the, the game according to the rules. You don't put the girl in a situation, like we were saying the other time, that, oh, if I don't sleep with you right now, I can't know whether I'm going to like you after marriage. You understand? Because that's like you are eating your cake and you're not going to have it at the end of the day. So is that a test? Is that a test to know whether it is genuine love, whether it's lost, or it's it's a very good test. I would I, I would believe that it's a very good test. I would, I think uh, a guy who really means business, he, this is the thing. This is my own theory. If a guy is too quick to get onto the bed, he should also be very quick to go to the altar. If he can't be quick to go to the altar, then he should just forget about the bed. So that, that is a good way for you to look at, at the thing. Because if, if like, and I'm, I'm, I'm not still my, my yardstick here, my measuring stick, you find out that my mom just wanted to sleep with her. That was all he wanted. And he was ready to break all the rules. This guy, he wants to sleep with her too. Don't forget, don't think that Jacob, Jacob was not this saintly guy. He too, if you look at, if you look at the Bible, if you read that same scripture, they said, they said Leah, Leah's eye was weak. Because Leah was the one, he was, there were two sisters, right? But the, when he looked at the other girl, she was very beautiful. If you look at the way the Bible described her, it's like he liked her shape. She had some, wow, I said, man, this, this is wonderful. You understand? So he wanted, he saw something that, that also drew him. So he had that sexual urge or sexual attraction towards, Eros. yes, Eros towards, um, towards uh, Rebecca. But the difference was he was willing to do what it, what, what it takes, what it took to be able to get to, uh, to the girl. While the other guy was willing to break everything in the book just to get to the same uh, person. Hallelujah. 
So, you know, so falling in love could be positive and it also could be negative. I mean, you have something to say. Uh, with what I'm hearing now, what I understand by this is you're equating love to sex. Love is equal to sex. No, but not, no, 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 no. Let me explain. Okay. To a believer, right? Love is equal to sex in due time. To an unbeliever, love is equal to lust. Lost is also sex. So that's what we're doing. We're equating love to sex. That's my own theory. No, first of all, first of all, the, the topic that we're dealing with is love and sex. Right? So whatever we are doing, we're trying to uh, link uh, both of them together. So it's the love and I, we like what, what I was uh, saying when I, I was talking about the the life of uh, of Jacob, for instance. He loved that woman, but he also had an erotic attraction towards her, a sexual attraction, which is what plays out in our today's world, which is you see a woman, you, also, you have a sexual attraction towards the person, and it's not wrong to have a sexual attraction. The point is, how do you now uh, get from point A to point B in that relationship? So that is what we're talking about. Hallelujah. Okay, Pastor, please. I just want to say, um, I love your equation, believer or non-believer. I believe every here, everybody here is a believer. Mm -hmm. So we're talking to believers. I'm talking to people that can speak in tongues, people that have been in church. Because Paul was saved. And Paul said in Romans chapter 7, the good I want to do, I find myself not able to do it. It is the evil that I don't want to do that I find myself doing it. Oh, a wretched man that I am, verse 25, who can deliver me from this body of death? It means, you know, no matter how tongue-talking, anointed, finish 40 days fasting, you see a lady tomorrow, I'm telling you, if you don't have the Spirit of God on you, you don't know them. Because this is where we need to have the control. Mm -hmm. It's not about um, love is equal to place. It's basically more about how do I exercise the self-control. I want you to know that 60% of born-again Christians that have sex before marriage did not plan for it. The reason is because they did not know how and I believe this is this forum is to be able to help everybody on how to run away from it, flee every appearances of evil. So we want to be able to distinguish of how can I how can I differentiate in this love that we are talking about is actually a love that is leading to marriage or is actually a loss. Because when a guy in fact, Pastor, I think we are we are out of touch with this generation because some some, some of them they didn't, don't even use the word love. They use the word I like. So I try to find the question, I say, okay, what does it mean to like and what does it mean to love? They say, no, love is a more stronger word. I still try to go to my dictionary to see the difference. You like something, you love something. Like and love is the same when it comes to a relationship. But you see, people, people, are, people are gullible in the sense that they, they, there is something in them. That is the way God created us. This thing you feel within you, I was preaching somewhere back in Nigeria, and I say it's not your time. The Bible says there is time for everything. Ecclesiastes, right? So when you feel your jaw ball is raising, just, just hit it back and say it is not time. That is the reality. Until you take some radical steps, you will not be able to maintain your purity, your virginity, your, your, your sanctity. And this is, this is a matter of life and death. Flee every appearance of evil. So it is a cancer that is eating the body of Christ. And we don't talk about it. Uh, parents, most especially, don't talk about it. I want to ask a simple question here, and I want an honest answer. I don't want the cameraman to, to do that. How many of you here, can you remember, I want to see the percentage of people here that your parents sat you down when you were growing up to talk sex to you, heart to heart, to tell you the advantages and the disadvantages of sex. Not, not that they, they talk to you and say, if you, have, if you touch your man right now, you are going to have pregnancy. No, no, no. I need to explain the good side of sex. I want to see your hand. Only two people in this place. Are you raising your hand? Three. Three. No, 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 four. I have four people. Look at the percentage. Majority of the percentage of us have not been taught about sex by our parents. And we've not been taught about sex from the church. So I believe this is a good forum. This is something sad that is happening in the body of Christ. No matter how born again we are, you are in a relationship you find that you mean good, not evil, but uh, you close the door, you say you are being prayer for your fiancé, in the midst of laying hands, by the time you open your eyes, you are doing another prayer in another Holy Ghost. <laughs>